Hi, I'm Philip Hundel. I'm an attorney. Uh, my practice focuses on land litigation, primarily uh, representing landowners facing eminent domain condemnation cases. Uh, also, when I refer to land litigation, I also actually right now uh, have a lot of uh, partition, uh, land partition cases going on. What I want to talk to you all today about is uh, highest and best use of land in the context of a partition case. If you're facing uh, condemnation uh, as a landowner or actually uh, needing to partition some property amongst you and some co-owners, probably family members, um, it's always important to take into consideration highest and best use of the land or you know what the land's used for. You shouldn't uh, consider land that's uh, you know along a busy highway that's very much uh, in line for future development, future retail, commercial as just strictly agricultural use land or recreational land. So, um, so that, that's a pretty easy concept. I, don't, I think everybody agrees with that. Um, but also, if you have some property uh, that has pipelines on it, uh, multiple pipelines on it, uh, your, pro your property could be the highest and best use as a pipeline corridor. Now, this concept or theory has been around for a long time. So keep that in mind, and, and now I want to kind of kind of transition into uh, when you're partitioning property. Uh, I've got a large partition in, actually in Brazoria County, uh, and the property actually has about, uh, I think, 11, to 11 or 12 pipelines on it. Uh, but, you know, these, these pipelines are stacked, just you know, one right next to the other. Um, and, and so without a doubt, <clears throat> uh, this route or this location of the property, uh, you know, uh, has the highest and best use of the pipeline corridor. So uh, now at this point, uh, you know, my clients are wanting to partition this property or some of the co-owners of this property are wanting to partition it. And so without a doubt, you have to consider uh, all the different features of property when you're partitioning it. Simple example, you know, if you've got 100 acres and you've got uh, 20 co-owners and they all own, uh, you know, uh, they all own 5%, right, of the property or, or, or yeah, I mean, you know, 20 owners equally own it, 100 acres. That doesn't mean everybody, you know, automatically gets five acres, right? Uh, that scenario would happen if the land is completely, I call it homogeneous, uh, you know, exactly the same. Everything about it is exactly the same. Uh, and you could, you know, and all the value of every piece of piece of that property uh, is uh, the same, then yeah, uh, theoretically each person would get five acres. But I, most land is not like that. Uh, you know, the land may have uh, some area along a creek that, you know, a creek or water source has a, c a certain amount of value. Uh, but then also if it's in a floodplain, lower value, uh, if it's along a, uh, you know, major highway, well, that obviously is a different valuation for commercial or industrial along a railroad, uh, industrial development. So all these things uh, are characteristics of land that need to be taken into consideration for valuations when you're doing a partition. Uh, and we'll talk about the steps of a partition and the pr process of partition in another video, but, but you know, those... Special commissioners, when they're coming up with a report uh, to partition some land, or the parties trying to negotiate and come to an agreement on it, have to take into consideration all these different features. Uh, you know, which one's next to a road, maybe one part of it has access to water, irrigation, uh, part, one part may be in the city, one part's not in the city, uh, one part, uh, once again, has a pipeline corridor on it that has the ability to continue to be a pipeline corridor or power line corridor. All that matters for valuations in partitions, just like in valuations in condemnation cases. So uh, wanted to bring that up. Once again, you know, just have it top of mind when you're dealing with, uh, when you're faced with condemnation or faced with a partition case. I always look at it as, and there's used some illustrations. I think they're pretty good illustrations. But think about a think about a pizza. So if you have a big, large pizza, uh, and nowadays you can order a pizza. We get on online and we order Domino's pizza by our phone. Um, 
you can make that pizza pretty much however you want. So uh, in my family, we, everybody's got different tastes. And so uh, I love Super Supreme or Supreme. And so I'll have a quarter of that piece pizza being a Supreme and then uh, a quarter of it just pepperoni and then another quarter of it pepperoni and hamburger and sausage and then and then another quarter of it is purely just cheese well so i think that's a perfect example of uh, different uh unique characteristics uh of of that pizza right so domino's doesn't charge you as if that whole pizza is cheese that supreme piece of pizza or quarter of that piece of pizza would be essentially uh retail commercial pipeline corridor highest and use highest and best use for that land the cheese potentially recreational uh lower agricultural type valuation if that's the case so anyway uh, hope hopefully that's helpful if you're if you're dealing with a partition land partition uh, and these are some of the unique characteristics that you're facing okay good luck thanks